Welcome to Vegetarian Kitchen. My name is Arnie, and today I got a show. I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to cook this and eat it. Actually, I'd rather just be eating it, but I'm going to show you how to cook this stuff. We have Southern Home Cooking tonight, and I'm going to do two shows. There's so much to cover. I can't cover it in a half hour, so I'm going to do two shows. This is the first. Number one. So, um, I'll talk a little bit about the region, uh, the southeast. Uh, the foods there, the, the food in the southeast of the United States and the southwest are probably the most varied of all the regional American cuisines, if you will. Um, the reason I think is because of the in environment. You can grow a lot of things. The southeast is, is wet. They get a lot of rainfall. They get a lot of a long growing season. You can grow. I, mean, well, I grew up in New England and we couldn't grow. We'd, we never even thought of growing okra, peanuts, sweet potatoes, um, those kind of things. There are other things like collard greens, mustard greens. Those kind of things are in some ways unique to the South. Um, eggplants. Eggplant, we couldn't grow good eggplant in New England. You know, <clears throat> The summer was too short. Anyway. Um, so that adds to the variety. You have more ingredients that you can cook with. Also, you had in the South, the influences that came up in the North were immigrants, and they brought with them new and different things and different ways to cook. Uh, in the South, you had two classes. You had a wealthy class and a lower class. And what that creates is that you have a lower class that has fewer, uh, the fewer, the, less good quality food so they have to be creative with the seasonings to try to bring it bring the flavor up make it good make it edible okay it's a little tricky but that's happened in different places in the world anyway first thing I want to do I want to show you how to make hush puppies and I'm gonna make a cream gravy for the hush puppies like a dipping like a dipping gravy hush puppies are basically corn fritters and what I'm gonna do is show you how to make them with and without okra Okra is one of my favorite vegetables. I love that stuff. Uh, it has some unique properties that are unlike anything else. The feel of okra in your mouth is different from any other vegetable. Anyhow, hush puppies, first steps. Get yourself a mixing bowl. And the first thing, I take a cup of flour, okay? A cup of regular all-purpose white flour. All right, a quarter cup of cornmeal yellow cornmeal. This is, um, I think what I'm using here is a Quaker Oats product. I'm not trying to give a plug or anything, it's just that's what I picked up at the store. Okay, uh, we used to use, when I lived in the south, we used to use a lot of black pepper. So I'm using two teaspoons of black pepper. Um, also one heaping teaspoon of salt. Okay, a little bit, maybe uh, a half a teaspoon or less of baking powder. The baking powder will act as a leavening. It reacts with the buttermilk. Buttermilk is acidic. Baking powder is a base. When they come together they create uh, gas, bubbles of gas, and that makes the fritters, the hush puppies, expand when they hit the hot oil. These are deep fried. Okay, so I'll mix these up. And the other thing I want to do is take a couple of tablespoons of onion. I have a, this onion coarsely chopped right now. And a clove of garlic. These ingredients are very important. To peel the garlic, I take one clove, okay? I set it on my cutting board. And I take the, the flat part of this knife and just put it on there. Give it a couple of smacks. Take the peel, skin falls right off then. Just basically, just falls right off. If you try to do it without, without crushing it, it's much more difficult. Anyway, so I got my clove of garlic. I'm going to mince this fine. All right, nice fine chop. Then the second step, actually the third step with this clove of garlic is to take the edge of my knife and I use it to crush the garlic. This releases all all of the, there's essential oils in all herbs and spices. 
by crushing this garlic, it releases all the flavor. Okay, so then that goes into my mixing bowl. Onions, I chop them. I won't crush them. I don't need to chop them quite so finely, but it's a good, um, pretty good mince of onions. And you know, there's something else I'm going to do with these hush puppies. Um, not something, it's not traditional, but you know, if you've, if you've seen this show, you know, I'll come up with things that are non-traditional sometimes. I want to add a little bit, a tablespoon or so of, of whole kernel corn, okay? There's your minced onion, goes right into the bowl, all right? Now here's my corn, I'll add that. Gives it a little more texture, okay? Now, the next thing is I get some buttermilk. I add the buttermilk a little at a time. I want to make a batter that will hold its shape, hold together, but yet be light enough so that when you eat it, it'll be nice and moist and tender, okay? So what I do is I add the, the buttermilk a little at a time. This is Dolly Madison buttermilk. Those of you out there who are familiar with Dolly Madison know that she invented a function called the ice cream social. Believe it or not, I lived in upstate New York and they used to have ice cream socials where ladies from a certain class would get together in the afternoon, in hot, as hot as it got up there, it was pretty far north, in the hot summer afternoons, July usually, they get together uh, they're in their finest outfits and they'd eat ice cream and hang out. It was a lot of fun. They, they used, I, I never went to one, obviously, not being a lady, but uh, it was good. That was Dolly Madison. We have her to thank for that. Okay, now you see how this is getting, this will hold together, okay, and when I put, I'm going to show you how to do this with and without okra. When I put the okra in there, this batter will be thick enough that it'll stick to it, it'll hold its shape, and it'll wrap itself around the okra no problem. It's also moist enough that it will be tender and moist when it's cooked, okay? So I'm gonna let this sit. This batter should sit for a few minutes, okay? So what you wanna do is let it sit, let the corn absorb, let the corn meal absorb the moisture, okay? and it'll, it'll cook up more tender that way, okay? So I'm gonna let this sit for a couple of minutes and then we'll go over to the stove. I'll meet you at the stove and uh, I'll show you how to cook these. Okay, we're back. All right, now, what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to cook these hush puppies, okay? First of all, I wanna talk a little bit, since we're deep frying these and we never have done this before on the show, I just wanna go over a few basic things. Um, the temperature, when you're deep frying, you want to maintain a temperature of at least 350. I like to keep it between 350 and 375. So what I do is um, I go to the grocery store and I've got one of this candy thermometer, okay? It's a candy thermometer or a deep fry thermometer. It can be either or, okay? It has... Um, uh, it, it, it measures up about to about 400 degrees, okay? So you put it in your pan of oil and you'll notice, if you can see this, you can notice the level of the oil. I leave about two inches or so, okay? I don't fill it almost all the way or all the way to the top. The reason for that is sometimes you, you'll drop the batter in there and if there's a little more moisture, sometimes you get a little bit of foam, okay? So it's dangerous if this oil foams out of the pan and hits your flame, you can have a fire, okay? So be cautious, be aware of leaving yourself enough room for expansion